Welcome to a new vlog. Today I'm going to show you how to order your PCBs from start to finish. We're going to start with generating the Gerber files and walk you through the process up to placing your order on a PCB manufacturing service website. But before we get started, I'll take a moment to remind you that I now have a Patreon account so you can support me through Patreon to continue making more videos like this one. The actual start might depend on the CAD software that you use for designing PCBs. In my case, that's Eagle CAD. After finishing up the design of a PCB, you will have to generate the Gerber files needed to place your order. Think at these as an universal set of files stored in a format that every PCB manufacturing facility can read and use to manufacture your PCBs exactly as you designed it. In Eagle CAD we have the CAM processor that takes care of these things and luckily you can just load a pre-made CAM job file that will instruct Eagle how to output a complete set of Gerber files. I have a custom made Voltlog CAM job file for a two layer PCB. I will place a link to it in the description below so you can download it. This CAM job file will generate all the required Gerber files for ordering your two layer PCB including files for the cream layer which is used to order a steel stencil that will make assembly of surface mount components much easier. So after downloading the file go to the CAM processor and load it. You can then simply click process job and the software will output a zip archive containing everything you need. It's a good idea to now check your Gerber files to see if they look like you want them to look I often catch problems in the Gerber files at this step. These are things that were too small to notice in the PCB layout software or they were hidden be beneath other layers. There are a bunch of different websites where you can view Gerber files online and also a whole set of programs which you can use to do that locally on your computer but I'm not gonna go into that in this video I'm just gonna link a website in the description below. The next step is to send these files to the PCB fab house and the service I use is jlcpcb.com. You've no doubt seen their ads on my videos and they really offer cheap PCBs so of course I'm gonna use their service. So head to their website, create an account and after logging in click on quote now button on their homepage. This will take you to a page where you can upload the Gerber file zip archive we created earlier. Click add your Gerber file and select the zip archive. The website will load your file and correctly identify the dimensions of your PCB as well as show you a small preview. If you're a more advanced user you could play with these settings but for the average user the defaults are good enough for getting your PCBs. In the lower section you could specify if you want to order a laser cut stencil together with the PCBs. This can be extremely helpful for assembly if your design contains SMD parts and my design is based entirely on SMD parts so I'm gonna order a stencil as well. At this point you might add some comments regarding the stencil like for example if you only want the top side stencil you might want to specify this or if you need both sides mention this in the comments regarding the stencil section. As you can see 10 PCBs will cost you $2 and the stencil just $6 which is crazy considering years ago I was paying $200 for a set of 10 prototype PCBs from China. Next you will need to specify your billing and shipping info. Make your payment and the order will go into production. What's nice about the website is that it keeps you updated with the different steps involved with PCB manufacturing. Once your order goes into production, you can monitor how it goes through the different steps from your account. Manufacturing the PCBs will not take very long on jlcpcb.com. In my case, it took less than 24 hours. And next, depending on what shipping method you have and where you live, you might receive your order sooner or later. And here is my order. It comes into one of these boxes. It was delivered uh, through DHL. Um, I've also received a steel stencil which I'll show later but let's check out the PCBs. I got 10 PCBs exactly how I ordered them uh, and the steel stencil that I'll show you in a few minutes. But first let's uh, take a closer look at these uh, PCBs to evaluate their quality. First the milling quality seems to be pretty good. You want smooth clean edges if you opted for a completely routed PCB as is the case here. 
any rough edges here would indicate problems in the routing manufacturing process. But here we have very clean routing. This is what you want to see. There are no rough edges. Next, we're looking at hole registration. This refers to how the drill holes are aligned inside their pads. You don't want any offsets here. You want the drill hole to be located exactly in the center of the pad. Next, the solder mask, which is the green layer protecting the exterior of your PCB. It has openings for each connection pad and you want a nice even distribution of this layer and the openings should be aligned almost perfectly with the pads. If there is any offset here, you might have solder mask covering your pad, which might cause problems later during soldering. A slight deviation is accepted because the openings are usually slightly larger than the pad to accommodate for small deviations without covering the pad. The seal screen is the legend of your PCB. In this case, it's white color and here with a good PCB uh, fab house, you'll get excellent resolution and you'll get clear text even with smaller sizes. Since this is a prototype service, you wouldn't expect the highest resolution in the silk screen layer because that is not a priority and it could mean higher cost and we are talking about $2 PCBs here. There is no room for high quality silk screen printing and it's not exactly needed either for these uh, prototype PCBs. Also something characteristic to um, prototyping uh, PCB fab houses, they will add some text to your PCB. They use this to identify your order in a large panel because this is how they work. They take your design, they place it on a larger panel and they manufacture it all at once. So after the manufacturing is done, in order for them to easily identify which one is your PCB, they place your order number in the sales screen layer. You can usually submit some comments about this. You can ask them to place this under a connector, for example, or a big IC chip. Uh, but if you don't tell them, they will place it where they find it appropriate. This is the $6 frameless steel stencil that you get with your order if you check that option. And as you can see, we have here the openings for the pads on the PCB. So you can use this to spread the solder paste exactly where it needs to go on the PCB. This makes assembly of SMD boards really, really easy. Because I almost always use SMD components, I tend to order these uh, stencils every time and I use them, they work, they're good quality and uh, they have a really large number of uses uh, because they're made out of steel so they don't wear out that fast. There are many other factors to look at when discussing uh, PCB quality, but they would require more advanced equipment and techniques to analyze. For the average user, what I've shown above is enough to decide if a PCB is good or not. And my conclusion is that these PCBs from JLC PCB are of decent quality, certainly as good as they sell in other places, far more expensive because I've tried other services as well. Given that their website is a really easy to use interface and has all of these modern features, you can understand why it makes sense and I like to use their service. That was all for today. I hope this video was useful. Thank you for watching and I will see you next week.